my teacher, Ajahn Chah, when we brought him here to the U.S. Um, years ago in the late 70s, I remember him asking Sharon Salzberg, who was my teaching colleague at that retreat, um, he was always kind of testing and watching people, and he was kind of playful. And he looked at Sharon and he, he said, um, are you still suffering or is all your suffering finished? You know, and of course you have to be honest with him. He said, Sharon said, no. And then he looked at her and said, so, so how can you teach this stuff? <laughs> kind of testing. And she said, because I know suffering, I know its cause, and I know its end. And he laughed. He said, that's a fine answer. You know, <laughs> so this is the space like wisdom. And it reflects a kind of, uh, it reflects a, a connection with the mystery of life. It's not so much a knowing. In the Christian mystical tradition, it's called the cloud of unknowing. Um, the Zen call it don't know mind or beginner's mind. Um, Somerset Maugham wrote, there are three rules for writing the great American novel. Unfortunately, no one knows what they are. <laughs> <laughs> so we're kind of looking for the way it's going to be, right? Um, and from the Buddha, he says, who can argue with those who hold to no views? The wise have no views, the philosopher is wedded to their opponent, right? People who have great views, says the Buddha, go around annoying others. <laughs> and that, I'm sort of making a joke, I think, but that's there in the text. <laughs> the point of this is that in the wisest part of our own being and heart, there's a sense of presence for this mystery of birth and death. Um, because what is love? Does anybody really know? Or what is consciousness? Or how did you get into this weird body that you have, you know, with the wiggly things on the hand and the little patches of fur and stuff like that? Does anybody know? Where, you know? How did that happen? Or why there are one million species of beetles? Not to speak of butterflies and slugs and you know, there are there are you there are ten times as many um, various mites and bacteria and protozoa and things that live in your body than there are body cells. You're, a, as my friend Wes Nisker says, you're a walking feedlot, basically. <laughs> you're an ecosystem. You're this whole universal ecosystem. You know? Okay, a story for you from Robert Ardrey, great naturalist. He was visiting Louis Leakey in Kenya, one of the great fathers of paleontology. And Leakey pointed out to him what appeared to be a coral-covered flower made up of many small blossoms like a hyacinth. On close inspection, each blossom turned out to be the wing of an insect. These, said Leakey, were flotted bugs. Startled, Audrey um, remarked this was a, a striking instance of the protective imitation in nature. Leakey laughed and explained that the coral flower imitated by these bugs does not exist in nature. <laughs> Furthermore, each batch of eggs laid by the female includes at least one flotted bug with green wings, not coral, and several with wings of in-between shades. I looked closely. At the tip of the insect flower was a single green bud. Behind it were half a dozen partially matured blossoms, showing only strains of coral. And behind these on the twig crouched the full strength of the flotted bug society with wings of purest <laughs> coral to complete the colony's creation and deceive the eyes of the hungriest birds. My speechlessness had not reached its most mind-numbing moment, for Leakey shook the stick. The startled colony rose from its twig and filled the air with flut fluttering, flotted bugs. <clears throat> and then they all returned to their twig. <clears throat> they alighted in no particular order, and for an instant the twig was alive with the little creatures climbing over each other's shoulders in what seemed like random movement. And the movement was not random, for shortly the twig was still, and one again beheld the flower. Where does this come from? Give me a break. You know? <laughs> wisdom allows us to rest. Alan Watts spoke of the wisdom of insecurity, the wisdom of knowing 
things are always changing in this mystery, and yet there is a place to rest. But the place to rest isn't an opinion or a view or something that we hold on to. It is the place of wisdom itself that says, yes, this is this mysterious unfolding of our human incarnation with its pleasures and pains and gain and loss and praise and blame. And wisdom can bow to all of this as the way that it is. And if you've ever been to a birth, what an amazing thing. Here's another being coming out of a woman's body. Here I am, mm -hmm. next human, you know, or a death. Especially if you sit with somebody who's somewhat conscious as they die, and then they die. And it's not a horrible thing. It's, uh, it's more like a falling star once the death has happened. It's as if something amazing is taking place because his body was completely animated, and then it's not. And something changes or leaves the spirit, consciousness, whatever you call it. This is our law as human beings. We inhabit an incarnation for a time. You know, this is it. So wisdom understands this. And there's a perspective and a spaciousness that brings ease, graciousness to us. At the same time, in this spaciousness that doesn't get quite as upset as you might get at other times, that doesn't get quite as frightened, quite as clingy, quite as um, rigid, and this flexibility and spaciousness. At the same time, wisdom also has a form of action. Out of the mystery of emptiness, there also comes form in all the forms. And so with the heart of wisdom, we see what is present, and we respond. You could call this the wisdom of action. You could call it the wisdom of compassion. I remember when Ramdas talked about asking his teacher in India, named Karoli Baba, you know, tell me about enlightenment. And Neem Karoli Baba said, love people. Ramda said, no, 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 I want to know about enlightenment, awakening. <laughs> and he said, feed people. And that was his answer, love people and feed people. That's enlightenment for Neem Karoli Baba.